Hi, welcome back to Frank's Modeling Bench. Shit happens. This is a model that I was building back in uh, 2009 or so, and it has hundreds of hours into it. That's a combination of a scratch built and uh, aftermarket set cockpit that is some of the best work I've ever done. I was progressing on this model and um, I had some problems with the paint and uh, wound up having to shelve it because I didn't quite know what to do, which is wise. Um, lots of good work into this, but uh, scratch built work in the, in the landing gear wells as well as those amazing uh, brass wheel wells by Rado, Rado Brinson. This is uh, on par to be one of the nicest models I've ever built right up until the point that I completely screwed the paint up. And the, the problem is, is I kept putting paint on to cover flaws that I was using through sloppy craftsmanship. I was staying up too late. I was, I just wasn't using good technique. Anyway, I ruined the paint. So I stuck it away and not too long ago, I pulled it out and stripped the paint off and I'm uh, gonna go about repainting the markings. And uh, this caused somebody to ask me how I had stripped the paint. And I hadn't really thought about it before, but uh, I just thought everybody kind of knew how to strip paint. But if you'll notice how this paint was stripped, it's a little different than some people say. I mean, I know I've seen people suggest using things like brake fluid and Easy Off and various uh, chemicals. That I, I don't do that because if I would have dunked this in brake fluid, I would have completely destroyed the uh, cockpit as well as the, the gear bays and everything else. I don't want to remove all the paint. I only want to remove the bad paint. The cockpit in this is actually painted quite well, and it doesn't need to be removed. So that's the conundrum. How do I remove the paint from the uh, the fuselage, all the fuselage, without without destroying my cockpit and wheel wells? The answer is actually quite simple. Um, it's to use uh, this yellow cap to make a lacquer thinner. Now, I have been painting this model in Tamea, it was painted in Tamea products with a Mr. Surfacer, uh, you can still see some of the Mr. Surfacer in it, with a Mr. Surfacer uh, primer coat. So uh, those are all lacquer based. Um, so Tamea lacquer thinner has this amazing property, well it will interact with the paint, but it will not interact with the plastic. So this is actually a very, very good way to remove paint on a painted model. It's uh, somewhat tedious, but it actually isn't as bad as it may seem. And I'm going to demonstrate how I do that. Put this out of the way. This is a hack piece. This is a, a wing from a P40B kit that I use, you know. And recently I was practicing my RLM 74, 75, 76, plus a little bit of weathering. Prior to working on my Spitfire, I wanted to make sure my weathering technique was on, on par. And uh, I, don't, I don't know if you can see the detail in this, but, but this is actually pretty well painted. But this, this, this particular wing at the moment is painted in AKRC paint, which is similar to Tamea, similar to Gunsey. But prior to wearing this particular coat of paint, it was painted in uh, Mission Models paint. I had used this to, uh, to test painted on markings. I had painted my uh, markings for my Spitfire on it to make sure... I knew the, the steps I was going to take to actually paint that. And uh, when I was done with that, I stripped it off, and then I, now I painted this. But I'm, I'm just going to demonstrate on this, this, this wing how easy it is to use Tamea lacquer paint to do this. Now, you want to have a well-ventilated uh, area to do this. This is a very fumy process. But, uh, and you also want a whole bunch of Q-tips. But it's real simple. It starts just by dipping a Q-tip in, in Tamea lacquer thinner. And then you just start rubbing on the part. And as you can see, immediately the tomato lacquer thinner begins to interact with the paint. And it makes a big mess. That's, that's what it does. But if you're careful, and you want to be really careful around cockpits and landing gear bays, you just slowly, and you go through a lot of Q-tips when you do this. I mean, there's just no way around it. Um, I find the, the precision of Q-tips to be why I use them. You could use a rag, I suppose, but you're probably going to... I don't know. I just like the Q-tips. Anyway, so...
the first layer of, uh, of paint is, is liquefied at this point. Now, this works exactly the same on Mission Models paint, by the way, and also Vallejo. This technique does not work that great on enamel paint. So if you have something that's painted with uh, Model Master or uh, Humbrol or something like that, you'll have to find a different technique. This won't work with that. Not very well, anyway. So, yeah. That's another good reason to paint with lacquers. Just they're really easy to get off if you have a problem. But we're starting to be able to see the part. And that part that you just saw there, that part had been uh, primed with Mr. Surfacer, painted with AKRC base paint. Um, a clear coat of uh, GX2 was put on it, and it was weathered, and then a coat of uh, Galleria varnish on top of that. So, so it wasn't just a, a simple layer of paint. One of the reasons I like to strip my hack models is a lot of people, I see people, you know, they'll post a picture of their hack model, and, and you can't tell what the heck they're trying to show because their paint is so thick and, and, and it's, it's all interacting with each other and it just looks horrible. I You can't really test like that. I mean, unless you're building a model where you want to do, you know, 60 different layers of 60 different types of paint with decals and stuff in between, which I suppose there could be a need for that. But in general, you always want to start up with a clean slate. So you either, in my opinion, when you're doing hack building, you either need to have a new hack or you need to have a clean hack. And, and the easiest thing for me to do, and the most affordable, of course, because you know, coming up with new parts to to test on, this is just you know easy. To, it's easy enough to strip this paint off. So I don't know how long this video has been going, but not very long. And I've already got this paint off the swing. So you can multiply that. And these little tiny Q-tips with the uh, points on them, these are useful for like around uh, the canopy or the or the gear well. That gives you a much greater precision. But you only want to use the sloppy wet Q-tips, kind of like in the middle of the of the panels. And you, you don't need to get it all off at once. You know, it just it'll come off in layers. To be honest with you, if you painted it correctly in the first place, there isn't a whole lot of paint on it. You know, so but just like that, you're back to to a bare kit. That is basically bare plastic, and so I could reprime this and, and have another go with another technique or, or whatever I want to do. And I, and I do this all the time. I, I have a series of hack pieces that I use, and this is one. And this one I've actually featured in several of my videos. This one is a, this has been painted as a RAF Spitfire. It's been painted as a Mediterranean 109. It's been in Mission Models paint. It's been painted as an RAF Spitfire not that long ago in Mission Models paint when I was trying to figure that out. Um, it's been painted in AKRC paint and it will be painted many other times. It'll it'll be wearing a natural metal finish surface here pretty soon. But uh, but that's all I do is you just take this Q-tip and rub on it. And it looks dirty and it's okay if it looks a little dirty. That, that residue on there isn't a problem. And some of the residue is uh, like, like that dark spot right there. I actually had pure lacquer thinner land on this model, and that stain is is staining the uh, where the lacquer thinner marred the paint. So, uh, honestly, if if you were to do a slight wash of of Tamiya lacquer thinner with uh, some color in it over a model, it'll show you where your paint isn't quite right. I'm not suggesting you do that, but it would do it if you're completely anal about that stuff. But anyway, that's that's all it is, and that's all you have to do to strip a model. And that's how I do it. So I hope that's uh, useful, and thanks for watching.